Hey, my name is Angela. I'm a registered dietitian, nutritionist, and today I want to talk to you about what is new in nutrition research. And these are some studies that have come out recently over the past several weeks. Some of the topics that we're going to talk about is turmeric and whether it helps with digestion and blood sugar, as well as soy and blood pressure and the vegan diet versus the Mediterranean diet. And lastly, we'll talk about grapes and UV rays. All right, even though I am a dietitian, I am not your specific dietitian. So if you have any questions or wanting to implement these, feel free to reach out to your dietitian or your doctor, or if you wanna connect with me personally, you can do so at dietitianangela.com. I have a services uh, tab at the top of my website that you can connect to if you wanna uh, talk with me one-on-one. -on -one. All right, but for today, we're gonna to talk about the first topic is turmeric. And turmeric, if you don't know, is a anti-inflammatory spice. And it's widely used for with joint pain and issues, just pain in general. And so it's a great spice to add to your food. It adds a lot of color without adding a lot of flavor, but you wanna make sure that you're using uh, black pepper when you use turmeric. And so, but in this research that they found out was turmeric its component is curcumin that makes it the antioxidant. And of that antioxidant, they took another extract of it called curcugin and whether or not it helps with stomach issues, mood, and overall quality of life. The participants were randomly placed into two different groups in which they did not know whether they were going to get the 500 milligram extract or not for eight weeks. And what they found is that this curcumin extract, curcugin, improved people's digestive complaints of diarrhea, indigestion, reflux, abdominal pain, and overall symptoms. And it also helped with anxiety and stress. And so that's pretty amazing that just out of eight weeks that it was showing to help with a wide variety of digestive systems. I mean, I can understand abdominal pain, but with diarrhea and indigestion and reflux, I mean, a lot of other types of uh, inflammatory processes that kind of go on in the body and whether it also helped with anxiety and stress. So that's pretty amazing that the information that they found out. The next topic with turmeric is, again, they took another extract, but of a different type of component called curcuma, curcuma longa L. And they took 500 milligrams of this along with five milligrams of pepperine, which comes, which is an extract from black pepper. Like I said before, you need black pepper to help absorb this antioxidant. Um, and people, they did the study in people with type 2 diabetes. Now this study came out on the 14th of February in the International Journal of Food Sciences and Nutrition. And these people were also randomized. They were double-blind placebo-controlled tr clinical trial for 120 days. And they showed that it had decreased people's fasting blood sugar, their hemoglobin A1C, which if you're, if you're not a diabetic, then that's like your snapshot of where your blood sugar is over the past three months. And so that's a critical diagnostic tool for um, determining whether people are diabetic or pre -diabetic, have prediabetes. So it helped improve both of those, fasting and hemoglobin A1C, helped to lower them, as well as people's triglyceride levels, which is the fat that's in your blood. And so if you're already kind of taking turmeric for pain, you know, I would just be a word of a caution. You also might see a lower in, according to this study, they're saying that you also see a lower in your blood sugar. I would just kind of be precautious, talk with your doctor, talk with your dietitian if you're also taking that and you're on diabetes medication as well. The next study that I want to talk to you about is a systematic review and a meta-analysis of a randomized double-blind placebo control trials. And so this study was put out in the Complementary Therapies in Medicine that came out on the 24th of February. And what they did is they took several different, a good several handfuls of studies, 
and they looked at it to review how well soy does on blood pressure. And some of the studies, they used about 40 grams of soy protein, they used 25 grams of soy nuts, or three months of consumption of soy milk. So there's a wide variety of different uses of soy here. And what they showed over looking at all these different studies is that soy did help improve blood pressure in those who were just healthy, they already had a good blood pressure, whether they had mild to moderate uh, high blood pressure, or even those who were hypotensive, and so their blood pressure is extremely elevated. And so whether or not they were consuming soy milk, soy nuts, or soy protein, all of them showed an improvement in their blood pressure. And so how the, they also looked at why this happened. And soy is a great anti-inflammatory food. And the component that's anti-inflammatory, isoflavones, actually activates nitric oxide production. And nitric oxide is, um, helps to relax the muscles of the blood vessels. and also helps to open up the blood vessels so better blood flow. So that helps improve blood pressure. But they also found that soy actually acts like a natural diuretic. It helps to take sodium out of the body through the kidneys. And so it's just another way uh, to help with blood pressure. And so this might be something to consider if you don't have an issue with soy and have um, high blood pressure or just looking at trying to prevent getting high blood pressure. You might want to look into eating whether it's soy nuts, drinking soy milk, or eating tofu or edamame soybeans or using like a soy protein powder. The next study that I want to go over with you was in the Journal of American College of Nutrition. And this one looked at a low-fat vegan diet versus the Mediterranean diet. And so this study randomized a crossover trial of 62 overweight adults. And they were randomly assigned the Mediterranean diet or a low-fat vegan diet for 16 weeks. Then they did a wash where the participants returned to their normal diet for four weeks. And then after that, they kind of flip-flop the diet. So if they were on the low-fat vegan diet, then they flip to the Mediterranean diet. And the same thing with if they were on the Mediterranean diet, then they flip to the low-fat vegan diet. And what they classified as their low-fat vegan diet was the fat content had to be at least 10% of their calories. Both of the groups could, there wasn't a calorie restriction, so they could eat as much amount of food as they wanted to. And so, but as long as for the low fat group, as long as they were eating at least 10% of their calories came from fat, 15% from protein, and 75% from carbohydrates. Now, the Mediterranean diet, they were eating a wide variety of foods. Again, there was no calorie restriction. They just wanted to make sure they were getting in a good amount of foods that line up with the Mediterranean diet. So eating several servings of fruits and vegetables, uh, legumes, fish, nuts, seeds that all fall into the basis of what a Mediterranean diet is. Um, they also were told to limit processed uh, foods. They couldn't eat red meat, um, limit other types of animal type fats as well. And so both groups were able to actually have a serving of wine and then a day. And so what this study had shown was that the low fat vegan diet lost 13.2 pounds more. So both groups lost weight overall. So regardless of whether they're in the Mediterranean diet um, or in the low fat um, vegan diet, they both lost weight. But the low fat vegan diet lost 13.2 pounds more. And they also, the low fat vegan diet, lost more f fat mass overall. So they looked up their quantities of fat that they were actually carrying, and the low fat vegan diet lost more fat mass. It's even more abdominal fat, so your stomach fat. They lost more fat compared to the Mediterranean diet. And then another 
result of the low-fat vegan diet is they had better improvement in their bad cholesterol, their LDL. Even though, again, both groups had improvement in their LDL, the low-fat vegan diet had a significant decrease in lowering their LDLs, as well as insulin sensitivity. And insulin sensitivity is where your, your cells are actually doing a great job of utilizing insulin as it takes out sugar out of the bloodstream and put it into the cells. And that is definitely needed. You wanna be in an insulin sensitivity state if you wanna prevent having diabetes. And so, but one benefit of the Mediterranean diet over the low fat vegan diet was that they had better improvement in blood pressure compared to the low fat vegan diet. There was actually an, an, a significant difference of a six points more on their, the top number of your blood pressure. Again, they both lowered their blood pressure, but the Mediterranean diet just did a better job at doing that. And so this is really interesting of how much you can still lose weight, you can still improve your health, you don't have to eat low carbohydrate to do it. And so to whether improve your your insulin sensitivity, your weight, as well as your blood pressure and your uh, cholesterol numbers, either the Mediterranean diet or the low fat vegan diet. And last uh, study that I want to go over with you is regarding grapes and UV rays. And I think this is was an interesting study that I wanted to share. It came out in the Journal of American Academy of Dermatology. And so the study took individuals, they either consumed a powdered freeze-dried grapes for 14 days or they took two and a fourth cups of whole grapes in a day for just for 14 days. And these grapes show that they had a significant increase in polyphenols in their skin, which is an antioxidant, the antioxidant compound that's found in grapes and that actually showed up in their skin, which made them more resistant to ultraviolet light. And so these findings also show that these consumption of grapes helped um, you to become more resistant. I think this is going to be an interesting to see definitely in the summertime if you wanted to try to experiment and see how well it helps with you during the summer and preventing UV uh, ray damage. And so the consumption of it is associated actually with less skin cell damage and fewer inflammatory markers of UV light exposure. And so just two cups, two and a fourth cups of grapes, which is easy to come by, easy to do in a whole day, um, and can help with preventing skin cell damage. It was, they found that association. And so, well, if you like finding out some information about what is new in nutrition research, then feel free to give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions about what I went over today, all the links of the studies are going to be in my description box. And so look for those there. Otherwise, um, I hope you guys have a happy, healthy day. Take care.